uh, this is what you expect to find in a grade 10 um, exam. But now when you come to what you call biosphere, um, sorry, when you come to what you call the biosphere, you have to talk about terrestrial aquatic uh, biomes. Uh, in this regard, location of different biomes. So this is going to take you eight marks. So basically, when you come to the distinction material, please make sure that uh, this is what they are talking about. But this brings about the summary of everything. Biomes, check, uh, look at the different colors. So follow that guide so that you are able to uh, scoop out. These are the different biomes they are talking about. So please know at least the, the, the way how I've stipulated them there. But the most important thing is you need to know where is savanna located on the map, uh, at the savanna, grassland, in Amakaru. We like to bring this gra um, not graph uh, map. So please um, make sure that you know how to find them in, uh, on the map. So based on this, because they are saying that location on, uh, of different biomes in South Africa. So make sure you know that. Uh, when you go to the next point, um, I'm not going to use a lot of minutes, maybe 10, 10 minutes will be maybe enough. So at least make sure that you are on the live. Then we have what you call the environmental uh, environment and ecosystem. Uh, this one includes the NIJ uh, flow uh, diagram and nutrients. So here they talk about the concept of human activities and interactions, biotic factors and biotic factors, physiog uh, physiographic uh, factors. We like to ask this. Why? Because these ones, they confuse the students when they bring a slope like this. Né? And then they ask you this side, uh, the sun is this side, and they ask you how do, uh, what is being shown here aspect because this is uh, showing the direction of the sun and then the slope and then the altitude uh, so you need to know that let me show you what I'm saying here in the booklet um, so these are the uh, aquatic biomes so when you come to environment please know at least the definitions because you can bring them in the uh, terminologies biotic factors these are factors which you really you are able to answer them very fast and abiotic factors but when you come to abiotic factors we rarely ask about edaphic factors when you bring about the edaphic factors uh, we bring about uh, maybe amount of air in the soil in, in terms of experiment but in most cases I've seen many exams you find uh, physiographic factors yes uh, aspect slope and altitude please go when you know this is what i'm trying to say this you see we like to ask uh, these questions you see so how what is shown here this if if here is the sun so what is shown here so it shows the 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 the, the aspect and then uh the gradient is what called the slope and how high this is is how high it is from the sea level is what you call the uh, the altitude so you please go when you know those factors we like to ask uh, the uh, uh, physiographic factors uh, in terms of the abiotic factors and then when we come to wetlands we ask about wetlands they, they, when we ask about wetlands at least go when you know three advantages of, of wetlands uh, what is are some of the functions of wetlands you know uh, stores water we can get uh, uh, food from there we can get uh, papyrus we can get uh, uh, grass for building the houses mud we can get is home for many birds so there are so many advantages there so please at least you know that uh, because it's also another aspect we, we usually ask in the what uh, in the exam so uh, when we go to the next aspect uh, they are saying that water light yes so we have talked about them uh this one uh trophic levels uh producers consumers and decomposers i know that you know this this is very easy to 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 answer but what tricks the students are uh, is this 
uh, what tricks the students is this what tricks the students is uh, how energy is being lost calculate the amount of energy being lost this why from here to here how much is 10 percent uh, being uh, transferred from one traffic level to another please know this ne? this energy thing ne? yes so please always use this distinction material book you will be able to get it you will be able to get the distinctions you you are trying to look for and then the different uh, kinds of uh, uh, when you have something like this actually this is a normal pyramid yes and then anything which is starting with a small and then big and then small something like that we call it inverted pyramid but this can not be for energy pyramid on uh, uh, the, the, the pyramid which shows the energy flow is always like this and in most cases it shows few number of individuals a lot of individuals and then fewer individuals yes so one tree a lot of uh, maybe butterflies and then and then you have a bird feeding on the butterfly you see one tree a lot of butterflies on the tree there are a lot and then there are uh, fewer bird compared to the butterflies which are feeding on so pyramid of number pyramid of biomass can be like this or can be like this or uh, it can be like this pyramid of number and pyramid of biomass can be like this but pyramid of energy is always like this pyramid of number pyramid of uh, biomass pyramid of energy all of them can be like this but only pyramid of energy cannot shift from this to this but the other two can do that so please don't go to the paper without knowing that sometimes we ask you this what will happen to this if this is removed what happened to this if that is removed and this is removed so guys try to read this you'll be able to get trophic this this we like to bring this in the terminologies autotrophs uh, organisms which can uh, produce uh, their own uh, food heterotrophs uh, those are organisms which feed on other organisms decomposers organisms uh, which break down the dead organic matter yes like the saprophytes the bacteria and stuff so um please go when you know uh, when you come back to the highlights here i think we are done then we go to the flow charts here we are talking about nutrients uh talking about water meaning that the cycles uh the, the basically what we like to ask about the cycles is a uh, water cycle and nitrogen cycle even others we ask them but we like to ask uh what we call the water cycle and the nitrogen cycle yes let me show you what i'm saying um so this is i think i've explained this but differentiate between a, a food web and the food chain the arrow what does the arrow indicate all those things uh just highlighting you because some students were asking me about this the, the, the scope and i sh um let me say i'm saying the scope or i'm not saying that scope i'm saying the prediction and then where can we find in my book in the prediction so in this case today i've not used the questions because usually i use the questions and then i show you uh most likely questions to come and stuff like that but now i'm just showing you where to read in the book yes if you don't have it just download it from our website or you can just join our class and then choose on the you will see there the button which shows join yes and then choose books and then after that you can download the book all right then we go to water cycle yes we like to ask you this we hide something here and then ask you what is that uh, i hide this and ask you what is that so basically that's what you usually ask and then we also ask um, we like this but don't usually come in the exams we like the nitrogen cycle please you can talk about others but this uh, we like it too much so make sure that at least you go to the paper when you have mastered this then we go to the next sub topic that is classification uh, here when you talk about classification you have to know why do scientists use uh, scientific um, names why um, we say that just to uh, prevent this confusion in the five kingdom system uh, so the different kinds of um, 
of, 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 of naming or classifying the organism. So please go when you know the five kingdom system, the two uh, kingdom system, the five kingdom system, but we like the five kingdom system. And then uh, we also bring these uh, eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. We said U means true nucleus. You can go to the uh, videos I had already posted. You'll find them there. Yes, prokaryotes, eukaryotes. Pro means before. This means true nucleus, meaning that they have a true nucleus. The nucleus is nuclear. Um, the nucleus is bounded by the membrane. So we saw this one, the autotrophs, uh, multicellular. So the five kingdom. Yes, this is the five kingdom I'm talking about. Then taxonomy. Please, no, 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 no. These systems, these, these, these systems are uh, created by these guys, né? which called a binomial, of which we use, when you're talking about the binomial system, we use the genus, use the genus, and then the species, species name. Don't forget that the genus, the, the, when they ask you to write uh, something in, in, the, in the scientific name, the genus is always starting with a capital letter. For example, uh, if I'm Musa Saidi, yes, all right, yes, if that's it. I know that most of you have been knowing me as M. Saidi. Well, anyway, that's not a big deal. Uh -huh. If I'm Musa Saidi, yes, and ask you to write this in a scientific name, yes, so what am I going to do? I'm going to say Musa is going to be capital S, capital M, and then Saidi is going to be small s. So first letter is capital Homo sapien, Homo sapien, Homo with a capital letter, and then sapient with a smaller i think i'm clear there so we call it a binomial uh naming system or nomenclature nomenclature comes from what naming anyway i'm not teaching then we go to uh when we come back here i think you you can get those things uh, what what i talked about prokaryotes eukaryotes i talked about uh differences between the two this one has the true nucleus has no true nucleus uh so, so you can go and then read about those difference history of discovery uh, history of life here we are talking about the geological time scale in most cases this when you have to know how to use how to use the geological time scale this is what i'm talking about the anyway but you just need to know also the events which took place there but you have to know how to use the geological time scale i know that you have to be knowing by this time because even they brought it in the uh in the sba yes so they say that they are coming back please don't go back don't go don't go to the exam without knowing the mass extinctions the five mass extinction yes please go when you know them what is gonna cause is even the next mass extinction yes and then the, the formation of uh, for, uh fossil please go when you know how to explain the formation of uh the fossils fossil formation uh, if you come here in our book you will find it here the fossil formation the fossil formation is here the six month extinction we talked about it fossil formation don't go without knowing dead the deposition and then permeabilization uh, and then uh, uh, erosion or sometimes called exposure or removal of the the covering and then the 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 fossil can be exposed outside so please go when you know these things don't forget that the paper is 150 marks if it's 150 marks then automatically you have to be we have limited content it means that we're gonna be testing almost everything né? so please make sure that you at least you go when you know this uh, as they said it they said it formation uh, radioactive radiometric dating and then carbon uh, re uh, relative dating here we are using layers of soils né? we don't know the actual age well here we can know yes you date using the radioactive substance anyway uh, we go here is the things we are talking about different fossils please know how to uh, these fossils so, so methods of dating and then when we go to the next is molecules organic molecules here they talked about uh, please know these carbohydrates carbohydrate these ones we usually bring them in the these ones nucleic acid so we can't bring all of them né? vitamins we usually bring them in objectives né? but this uh, or oh, uh, a passage but carbohydrates uh lipids and the proteins hey those ones yeah please don't go without knowing those
those, 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 those carbohydrates, the, 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 the advantages, mm -mm, the advantages of all the functions of this. Please ma make sure, don't make a mistake without knowing these carbohydrates. Ne? These carbohydrates. Then, uh, another thing which I should emphasize on is the food testing. When you talk about food testing, so after reading these ones, these compounds, you have to know how to test them. How do you recognize them? And then, uh, uh, how do you recognize them? We said the proteins, what do you use? Use buret reagent. And then, uh, uh, starch, starch we use iodine solution. Uh, blue black then this one it turns from blue to purple if you use the buretis test and then um, uh, how do we test for lipids lipids you can use the transparent uh, uh, paper or you can use the two layers the miscibility whether they can mix or they cannot mix then glucose let me talk about the glucose glucose uh, glucose, what do you use? We use Benedict solution. It's blue also, but it turns from blue to green to yellow to orange, depending on the concentration. Yes. Blue to green to orange to, uh, to, to red. Sometimes they say red, sometimes they say brown. Yes, depending. And sometimes they used to say brick. Uh, no, no, not brick. Uh, yes, brick red. The, the, when the brick is red, they call it brick red. But which color is that? Is is red. So it's better to say Right. So the types of carbohydrates, the monomers, the monomers of carbohydrates are glucose and fructose. The, uh, when we talk about the disaccharides made up of two sugars, polysaccharides made up of many sucrose and uh, cellulose, glycogen uh, in animals. Yeah, so please know that. When it comes to the enzymes, please don't go to the paper without knowing these factors affecting the enzymes or enzyme activity. Temperature, yes, pH, yes. You have to know these graphs. So this is what I'm saying. This is, so we have talked about this. Yes, we have talked about this. So please, when you go to the enzyme part, go when you know these graphs. Know these graphs. Yeah, this me mechanism, key and lock. We also like, I think when I was teaching, I was very clear about it, that don't go without knowing the key and lock hypothesis. How does it, uh, how, how do the enzymes uh, move? Yeah, these, these graphs. Don't go without knowing these graphs. You see those graphs. And then uh, lastly, uh, is the, the cell. The structure of the what? The structure of the cell. Yeah, this one is a little bit scooped out. The structure of the cell. Yes. Uh, plant cell and animal cell. Mm, we can bring a plant cell or we can bring animal cell. Or sometimes we can bring uh one part of animal cell and one part of animal plant cell so when they say it here that mm, you must know the structure of uh, makeup of the cell proteins so we have done with that make sure that you know the size shape of all these organelles meaning that you have to know uh the the, the plant and the animal cell so when you come here please know how to draw the plant or mm, how to label the plant and animal cell. But I usually tell my students to draw so that they master what they are labeling. So the difference between plant cell and animal cell, please know that. And then these organelles, the organelles, obviously we might not bring the cell membrane. If you are bringing the cell membrane, we can ask. But what we usually bring is either a mitochondrion or a chloroplast. You can't go to the paper without knowing a nucleus, nucleus you remember when i was teaching you i say that nucleus you have to go with your your what your your hands and then the chloroplast you cannot go to the paper without knowing the, the structure of the chloroplast and you cannot go to the paper without knowing the structure of the uh mitochondrion so the mitochondrion the chloroplast and the nucleus please go when you know them even here i think they highlighted them uh, i saw them somewhere they say that you must, you know, yes, they are here. Drawing of at least one. Nucleus, mitochondrion, and chloroplasts. Please make sure that you know this. And then lastly is the bar graph, uh, line graph. Uh, make sure it has a title. Make sure that if it's a bar graph, these bars have the same size, same space. Uh, same. Make sure that, yes, everything, it, there is 
what you have written here the x uh, the y axis the x axis the title this one must have units even this one must have units no units here so make sure that if it is a pie chart convert it into degrees and then if it's a line graph make sure that there is no line graph which looks like that there is no line graph which looks like that but there is a line graph which can be like that and there is a line graph which look like that on the scale so make sure that you know those points i think uh that is it uh, i said that i'm not going to waste uh, too much time here uh, but i beg you that Please and please don't go to the paper without knowing this nucleus, mitochondrion, and then the chloroplast. I think uh, that's it. And that's the, 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 the distinction material. If you want it, make sure that you download it and then use it. That's it. Yeah. So then, mean, meaning that the next term will be talking about the cell cycle or cell division. So that's it. God bless you. See you again. Um, I'll try to discuss the paper maybe immediately after you have uh, written. M. Sidi, as usual.